Okay, so in this last piece, it's gonna, it's really fun. <laughs> and it has the probability using permutations and combinations. So now not only are we gonna identify a permutation or combination, we're now gonna find probabilities. And this is where it gets really fun because we can do probability with lottery, with door prizes, passwords, and, and we're gonna do a fun one a little later called the birthday problem. And we get to find the probability of somebody in the same room as you having the same birthday. So let's just start with something a little simple. We're gonna do a four digit pin, and we wanna find the probability that there are no repeated digits. So the first thing we wanna see is that, okay, we want to know, understand that we have a four digit pin. What does digits mean? Well, if we look at our phone or, or keyboard, we only see the digits from zero. And we know this because we're in base 10, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you only have 10 choices here, right? You have 10 choices of digits that you can pick from to do a four digit pin. But now, and a pin is a personal identification number, right? It's something we use usually for our ATM card or something like that. Um, and no repeated digits means um, that we cannot repeat a digit. So once we used one digit, we have one less for the next choice. So here we have 10 choices, but we're only picking four of them right, four categories. So right away, when it says no repeated digits, right away, that's the red flag that says, okay, without replacement. And the fact that it's a pin number, meaning a password, that means that order matters. Okay, so we have choices, we have categories, we have without replacement, we have order matters. I think this is going to be order matters, a permutation problem, right? So we know now this is going to be permutation. Okay, so um, now that we have that, Let's go ahead and find the probability. So the probability of selecting a four digit pin, so picking the pin, is equal to the number of ways, right, we can pick a, a four digit pin all over the number of ways we can just pick four characters. Now, this is very important. Picking a four digit pin without re repetition is very in particular, right? As you pick a number, you have one less number for the rest of the characters. But just seeing four digits, I can pick with repetition. It doesn't matter. So the denominator is your whole entire sample space. So it can be with repetition. I could pick one, 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 one if I wanted, right? But it's only when I pick the pin, which is the numerator, that I have restrictions, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Well, the numerator is picking, picking a four digit pin out of 10 choices. So I have 10 order matters. So pick permutation four. Divided by, now just picking four digits. Well, I have 10 for the first. 10 for the second, 10 for the third, it doesn't even matter, so it's 10 to the fourth. And this should remind you of the one we did without repetition with the letters, right? So if I scroll up a little bit, remember I had letters, but I couldn't, I could repeat the letters, just the number of ways I could pick 20, uh, four, uh, five characters using letters, right? Well, that's just 26 to the fifth, because I could have it with repetition. But the moment I wanted without repetition, it changed. Right, it's, it's different. So the way I'm gonna pick four digits without repetition is gonna be different than when I can repeat. Okay, so then all I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna think about it. I did the hardest part. I'm gonna go ahead and put a parenthesis, put a 10 and use my calculator for permutation. 
okay? And then divide by 10 to the fourth. So notice I'm not gonna do all that arithmetic by myself. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the calculator. And I have 0 0.504 or 50.4%. So 50.4% um, chance that you can pick a four digit pin with no repeated digits. So think about your ATM digit code. Are there repeated digits, right? <laughs> okay, so let's do this one. The next one is Bucky told Satchel that he would give him a big hug if he drew three aces and two fives in no particular order. What is the probability Satchel draws his five card set? Okay, so now we think about, okay, so if I have the deck of cards again, remember that I have 52 cards in a standard deck. Remember, 13 per suit, four suits, all that stuff, right? Right, so I'll put 13 cards per suit and then four suits, okay? The other part we see, well, if that's the case, I have, how many choices do I have in a deck? Well, I have 52 cards, so I have 52 choices to pick from. And so I want to pick here. Now I have to be kind of careful, right? Because now what I'm doing is I'm picking two types of categories. The first category I'm picking are aces. So I'm going to put R sub A here, right? R aces. And I only have four choices to pick for aces, right? So four categories, four suits. And then I want to pick two five. So I'm going to put R sub five. And once again, I have four um, fives, right? Four categories. So notice I have um, two categories essentially, right? Because the aces are its own category, right? There's four of them and the fives are. So now, what is the probability that he draws his five card set? Well, does order matter? If I'm holding three aces and two, um, three aces and two fives, does it matter if I have ace over here and ace over here and a five in the middle? No, right? It's just how you hold the cards. There's no order to them. So here, I have choices. I have categories. Um, and notice that he's going to draw this. So it's without. We always assume without replacement. And order doesn't matter. So we do know that this is going to mean that we're going to be using combination. Okay, so this is kind of a, a mental part. This one is like, okay, mentally, this is going to be in my brain. I'm analyzing the problem. Now I can do it and you'll see that the problem now is going to be a lot simpler. So the probability that Satchel draws three aces and two fives is always going to be, right, the number of ways we can choose three aces and two fives all over the number of ways we can choose um, five cards. So and means multiply. So we're going to be multiplying two things. And now let's go ahead and if I select aces, I'm not going to choose a five, right? Numbered cards are different. So um, three aces. Well, how many ways can I pick three aces? Well, I have four aces and I'm choosing three. So I'm having four and I'm choosing three of them. So four, choose three. And the fives, right? I have four fives, but I'm only choosing two of them. All over how many ways can I pick five cards? Well, I have 52 cards in the deck, so I'm going to have 52 choose five. So notice the sum of the R's will be the sum of your categories, right? You're picking a five card set. 
So again, you have you have to think about it and separate it. You have essentially four choices of aces, but picking three. And you have four choices of fives, but you're picking two of them. So we separated it by multiplication and did each combination separately and then did over here choices. So it's four categories to the deck, but then again, the subcategory was I was only picking three and I was only picking two fives. So it's like a subcategory, right? So the four would be the choices of that category and then we're picking three to put in our deck. But we can easily put this in the calculator. So if we put this in the calculator, we can go ahead and do a parenthesis and put in four, choose three, right? Times and then four, choose two. And then divide it by parenthesis, 52, choose five cards. So we get this quite long decimal, 0 0.00000934. Okay, and this could be, or um, I don't think it really matters, right? But 0.00092344%. Essentially, there's a low probability that Satchel's going to draw three aces and two fives. All right, and so we come upon the next example, which is the lottery, which is so great. Um, because let's just say in a certain lottery, 48 balls numbered one through eight, right, natural numbers, are placed in a machine, and then it's like the super lotto, and then the balls come out, and six numbers come out, and if you get all six, you win like the, the lotto, right? So let's, for the sake of the problem, let's say the lotto is a million dollars, right? Of course, it changes every week, but... We'll just say for argument's sake, it'll be a million dollars. In this lottery, the order in which the numbers are drawn doesn't matter. So if it doesn't matter, it's your hint for combinations. What is the probability of winning first prize? Okay, so now notice that to win, okay, out of 48 numbers, right? 48 choices, you have to get six correct to win. Okay, so it has to match exactly. The fact that order doesn't matter Um, and notice that once you pick a number in the machine, you don't have like three 45s in there, right? It's only one one. Once you pick that 45 out, it's without replacement, right? So this is your hint that it's going to be a combination problem. Okay. So the probability that you're going to win the lotto would be the number of ways you can pick the winning six numbers, right? And then out of, well, just the number of ways you pick six numbers in the lotto, right? Usually, which are not winning numbers, right? <laughs> okay. And so I have 48 numbers, but I get only six of them are winning. And all six I have to choose are the winning numbers. So six, I have six winning, but I have to choose all six to be correct, right? Six, choose them all, right? And then how many ways can I, well, I have 48 numbers and I just randomly pick six and I hope that they are the lucky numbers. But when I put this in the calculator, when you have six, choose six, I just want to show you what that looks like because you're essentially picking all the numbers in your categories or in your choices. And you'll notice that it's one. So anytime you have a combination where the number of choices matches your number of categories, it's always gonna be one. And the denominator will go ahead and find 48 choose six, which is one big, right? One, two, two, seven, one, five, one, two. 
And then, of course, we could always put this in the calculator for an approximation if you needed it, point, and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which is obviously a very low percentage. That's why um, we tend to always ask for the fraction um, when we're doing these type of probabilities, only because it looks a little bit better than having this small fraction, which is less than 1%. So notice this is why this is where luck comes in, right? The word luck, because remember, as a probably probability gets closer to zero, it becomes more and more impossible, right? Impossible means the probability is zero. In this case, the probability isn't zero, but it's really close, right? So it's almost impossible to pick six correct numbers out of the six that this machine picks, right? So this is where I think luck comes in. We say people are lucky when they win. And it's not just a, fra a figment of, a, of an imagination of luck. Right? Luck to me as a mathematician means that the probability is so low and so close to zero, it's almost impossible for someone to win, but they win. And that's what luck is. So when you hear the word luck now, especially if St. Patrick's Day, when it's a lucky day, um, think about how the probability would be so low, almost impossible that you're getting, you're winning, right? Well, first place is, isn't always the winner, right? So now let's say uh, I'm going to just shoot for like, okay, that's just too low. Let me shoot for a second. <laughs> Let me see if I can win the second, the second grade of the lotto. <laughs> So you would only need five of the six numbers drawn. Okay, so this is where it gets a little complicated because now you need a portion of those six numbers to be correct and one of those numbers to not be correct. So let's go ahead and say, okay, in order to get correct numbers, you need six are correct, but you only need five choosing, right? You need a five to choose that are correct, right? This means if six of the 48 numbers are correct, this means 42 of them are not correct, right? 42 will not be chosen for the lotto win, okay? And that means that if you wanna win five of the six numbers, that means you're gonna have five that are winning numbers and one that isn't, is not a win. So you're going to have two pieces here, right? You're going to have the probability of getting five correct and one of them not correct out of, well, you have 52 cards in the deck, right? You have 52 choices in general to pick, um, oh, I'm so sorry, 48 numbers choices, and you're going to just pick six numbers anyways whether they're winning or not. Most likely they're not going to be winning, right? <laughs> okay, so what does that look like? Well, the probability of winning second prize is equal to, well, what is second prize? The probability that five numbers are correct and one number is not correct. All over the probability of just picking six numbers. Because you're gonna pick six numbers in a lotto, whether they're five winning or six winning, it, it just doesn't matter. So to, to get the exact second place, we need five numbers that are correct. And so I know I'm gonna have multiplication right here. One is not. So to have five correct, I know out of six, I'm choosing five that are correct. So six, choose five that are correct. And that means that out of 42 that are not correct, I'm picking one that is of those. So I'm gonna pick 40, out of the 42 that are not gonna be picked, I'm gonna choose one of those. So I do have some leniency, right? And then just picking six would just be 48, choose six, and who knows if they're numbers or not, right? Okay, so let's see what this looks like. So I'm gonna do um, the numerator first. So six, choose, five times 42 choose one.
252. And we're going to divide by the number of ways you can choose 48 out of 6, which we already did over here in the previous example. So we can just go ahead and grab that. 1, 2, 2, 7, 1, 5, 1, 2. Okay, so if I go ahead and just divide this by the 1, 2, 2, 7, 15, 12, I do get a decimal. I'm wondering if it's going to be too much if I go ahead and put it as a fraction. What do you think? Yeah, it is. So this one or um, we could say point zero 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 zero. Two zero five three five, and then if you even want to see it as a percent, you can, but it's still really low, right? So, notice that this one is a little bit better, it's not as far off as this decimal here, right? So, you do have some, but again. You know, uh, even to win second place seems pretty amazing, right? Because that is really close to zero. And the closer our probability is to zero, the more impossible it really does get to win the lotto. And so you may be lucky to win, meaning there's a really low probability of winning. Okay.